This is News 8 at 5. Hospitals across the country filling up fast as the COVID-19 Delta variant continues to spread. Now federal, state, local leaders are all taking a closer look at our pandemic protocols. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. And I'm Kirsten Holmes. This week, city leaders in our area have now issued vaccination and mask requirements for their government employees. But will it stop there? News 8's Heather Hope spoke to San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria about what's next. Yes, Steve and Kirsten, the city leaders we talked to today acknowledge the ever-changing guidance that we received this week. But outside of requiring their own city employees to be vaccinated and wear a mask indoors, there hasn't been any other mandates. In terms of mandates for the general public, I don't foresee those anytime soon. Weighing in on a week of new COVID-19 protocols, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria says the city is not requiring the general public to do anything different in terms of mandating vaccination or wearing masks. Public health orders are the jurisdiction of our county and state government. Neither have indicated to us that a mandate of that nature is coming. The CDC recommended masks should be worn indoors regardless of vaccination status and reported the Delta variant is as contagious as chickenpox. It's extremely concerning and I want San Diegans to take this seriously. In Chula Vista, several local leaders joined together at the East Street Trolley Center. All federal government and San Diego County and city and Chula Vista city employees are required to show proof of vaccination. Um, we are going to be checking the vaccination status of our employees. We have a very high vaccination rate within our city employees, uh, but we want to encourage 100% participation unless there's some underlying health reason. Chula Vista Mayor Mary Casilla Salas says the South Bay has seen an uptick in cases. So we're seeing a lot of cases in Chula Vista again. We'll well, all over San Diego County, and um, it's due to people not vaccinating. It's so important to do that. I've been talking to nurses that are burned out. You know, they're burned out, and, and it's really unfair to place a burden on those that are trying to help when you don't want to help yourself by getting a simple vaccine. More businesses are requiring customers show proof of vaccination. Urban Moe's Bar and Grill in Hillcrest made the announcement Friday that in order to attend its indoor shows and events, all must show proof of vaccination card and ID. If they believe that's what's necessary to protect the public health and keep their business successful, I think they should do that, and I certainly would choose to support businesses that did. This is a dynamic environment. I hear from a lot of folks their frustration that the direction and the advice changes, but I think that as we learn better, we must do better. And, what and in addition to the masking indoors recommendation all across the county, there are still eight sites the county set up to encourage more to get vaccinated. Stephen Kirsten. Okay, so new case numbers remain high in San Diego County. Tonight, health officials are reporting 881 new cases. COVID-related hospitalizations have also risen dramatically over the past month from less than 90 to almost 270. Tonight, 70% of all San Diegans age 12 and older are fully vaccinated. As the federal eviction moratorium is set to expire this weekend, a lot of people are rushing to apply for rental assistance. San Diego County's eviction ban, which is stricter than the federal ban, expires August 10th unless supervisors extend it. But renters will still be covered by the state eviction moratorium, and that runs through the end of September. Officials say there is plenty of money still available for anyone who needs help. If you're considered low income behind on rent payments, you can apply online. COVID rental assistance covers 100% of past and future rent going as far back as April of 2020. A lot of folks are happy that they can focus on other responsibilities that they have to their families instead of worrying about how are they going to pay their rent or if they're going to be evicted. Now, if you want some more information about this program, need to know where to apply, we have all the information on our website. We have a link there. Just go to cbs8.com and click on this story. We have an update on a story we brought you last weekend from Ramona, where two dozen families living in an RV park are being forced out over a zoning issue. Rather than facing fines from the county for being out of compliance, the landlord told tenants that electricity and water would be shut off on August 1st, and that left families scrambling to find a new place to live. On Friday, the county's homeless outreach visited the park, and they confirmed that the property owner will not be fined for now, and tenants now have until November 1st to move.
Some good news for them and a heads up if you're planning to head outdoors in the north and east county, Hellhole Canyon County Preserve and Valley Center, Mount Gower County Preserve in Ramona and El Capitan County Preserve in Lakeside will all be closed tomorrow through the end of August. The reason extreme heat. We've seen some dangerous conditions out there. If you do go hiking anywhere, remember bring plenty of water with you for any of those outdoor summer activities and make sure folks know where you are. Yeah, because that's been an issue too. That's where definitely been an issue. Can't find people. Yeah. All right. The East County man, they've been seeing rain. They've been seeing extreme heat. Yeah. The big question. Will all this continue out there? All right, let's bring in meteorologist Sean Stiles with a look at our microclimate forecast and get some answers. Hey, Sean. Hi, good evening, Kirsten and Steve. It looks like the bulk of these thunderstorms and well, the rain associated with them is exiting San Diego County and uh, parts of Riverside and San Bernardino County. Not before they got pounded though today. That's a live shot looking eastward from Mount Woodson. Here's what's happening. We've got this patchy AM and evening clouds and fog along the coastline. High pressure is starting to build in from the east and a warming trend will make its way into the inland valleys. What I want to show you though is the almanac today 77 76. So along the coast it's status quo inland though we're talking low to mid 90s for your daytime high and check this out. Look at Big Bear Lake as these thunderstorms popped up this afternoon. Boy, did they get pounded by the uh, thunderstorms, some mudslides up there, and this is all associated with the moisture streaming northward. So 79, 81, there's that slight warming trend starting to come in, and for the folks in the inland valleys, you'll go into the mid 90s by the time we get into the first part of the work week. How long will the heat wave last? I'll explain that in just a bit. All right, thank you for that, Sean. Today, the Asian Pacific Islanders Initiative had its first ever Filipino American Friendship Festival. The goal to celebrate unity through food, music, and a lot of dancing. News 8's Ariana Cohen joined the event in downtown San Diego and has more on how San Diegans from all backgrounds came together with a positive message. Advocacy groups have reported many hate crimes against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in San Diego, especially during the pandemic. But people that came to this event today say it's all about positivity. I'm a Filipina American myself, and I couldn't agree more. People from all walks of life are celebrating Filipino cultural dances, food, art, and games. At the inaugural Filipino American Friendship Festival at the Port Pavilion on the Broadway Pier Saturday. This event comes after President Joe Biden signed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act into law. It aims to combat hate crimes against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. We're all one people and I don't agree at all with the hate crime that's going on, whether you're Asian, Black, Hispanic, why it doesn't matter your color, where you come from. Um, and something like this, you know, it brings the community together. This Filipino mother hopes this free event shows her children it's better to spread love versus hate. I want to introduce our culture to them and see what we're all about. Like how there's a lot of people and how many games and how much fun people are having right now. The group Jam Diego showed up to promote positivity. To support friendship, to support unity. And coming together, learning about different cultures, coming together as one, unity. And of course, dancing. <laughs> we are a wide range from all over the world, and so this is what brings us together, dancing, movement, just yeah. happiness, and that's why it's so important that we are here, and I'm so thankful we have such a, a, a blast and amazing thing to come together. Ariana Cohen, News 8. Oh, that looks like a lot of fun. Okay, so why would you fly to Hawaii when you can get the same fun right here at home? The largest Tiki Festival in the world is right back here in San Diego. Tiki Oasis is an annual event for fans of the island lifestyle. The five day event features a vintage fashion show, tropical cocktails, and live music. The weekend, or this weekend, is the 20th anniversary of the event. It is the longest running Tiki festival in the entire world. Have you been to that? I, I don't even know what that is. What? I mean, I'm trying to go. It looks like a lot of fun. I was just looking at the pool thinking, man, I <laughs> wish I had nice. one of those. <laughs>